Hi. Hello. Hi. Welcome to my little corner of the internet. Now, today, we're discussing Saltburn. That's right, it's been over a month since this movie has been out, and you're gonna say, we're barely talking about it? Well, yes indeed. And you know why? Because I don't care. But, going back to it, uh, you know, I've just thought it would be nice to start, like, you know, throwing out my not amazing ideas out there to the world, seeing if anybody responds out to it, specifically in film. I love film. I could watch it forever. I could rewatch a movie forever. In fact, I think I rewatched Finding Nemo like an equivalent of two years of my life. <laughs> I was coughing there. I was not crying, okay? But yeah. Film, I can rewatch and rewatch and overanalyze every single detail. And you know why? Because every single detail was definitely thought in it in every film. Let's not forget that, okay? Saltburn. I decided that it would be a nice way to kick off the series because I wanted to start with a punch. You know? Something big. Something that made me feel like, <coughs> it made me feel something. And Saltburn made me feel something. Okay, maybe not the best things, but hey! That's why we go to the movies. Somehow, heartbreak feels good in a place like that. You know, that's why we go to the cinema, because we want to feel, we want to feel alive, you know, and Sunburn made me feel alive. So Sunburn is director Emerald Fennell's summer film, not the most amazing fact out there. I mean, you could just Google that if you wanted to. As a matter of fact, Google that. You can double check me. Her first film was Promising Young Woman, great film, really good, a good way to kick off your directorial debut debut. I think that was pretty redundant. And Saltburn was definitely a good way to follow up with that. I think, you know, Saltburn. There's so much to talk about it. I think I want to start talking about the cinematography of it. Cinematography is always one of the biggest aspects for me, actually. And for this one, this movie has amazing visuals. It was the number one reason why I decided to watch this movie as soon as I saw the trailer. The way I would describe the cinematography and just the general feel would be as God's euphoria. And we love that, right? You know, I I love movies where you can definitely see so much detail in every shot. Almost like a picture, you know? I, I think that's one of the things that I don't love so much about modern cinema. Nowadays, we see a very shallow depth of feel like... Almost all the time, and I feel personally, I think that's a very easy way out. I love when I can see so much detail in a shot. You know, there's nothing to me that's more satisfying than seeing like this tapestry and then shit in front of it, you know? That's how something becomes alive. And Saltburn definitely did that, you know? It's, it's, every shot almost feels like a painting, and it's amazing. The aspect ratio of the movie, it's, it's a choice, you know, and it's a, I think it's a really good choice. I have seen conflicting points of views about it. Some say that they wish the ratio was better, like was bigger, because the shots are so beautiful. You just want to see more. You know, you want to feel more immersed. A counter argument about it is that th things are kept more tight. You know, and I do, um, I have to give a point more to the the ratio in which the film was shot. It's I think it was a good decision. It's it was definitely to keep things tighter. It definitely made things feel like again like a work of art, like a painting for me. Now moving forward to the characters. Um characters I give the characters like a nine point five out of ten. Now let's start with our main character. <laughs> you know, um each Oliver, 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 oh my gosh. He's an amazing character. I saw the film with one of my best friends. She's an actress and the first thing she told me as soon as we got out of the movie theater was I would die for an opportunity to play on a character like Oliver. Barry definitely did an amazing job with Oliver. There's so many different emotions. You know, it's like a playful kind of way of trying to explore the psyche of you know what, somebody like him, I can almost understand like every action he did, <laughs> except maybe by the end, I 
I, that didn't make much sense, but we'll get back to that later, okay? On the other hand, we have Felix, which is like the opposite of him. Played by Jacob Elordi, which, you know, it's refreshing because we see Jacob typically with, you know, very callous, villainous, abusive characters like in Euphoria or uh, also recently in Priscilla. You know, and he does a good job. He, he does fantastic, but I think he showed, he proved he's more versatile by, um, you know, playing a very innocent and sweet character like Felix. Felix's heart broke, my heart broke. The rest of the characters were also amazing. Each actor and actress did like an amazing job with it. Now, story-wise, I'm not gonna go into detail about the plot. I mean, I'm just gonna say watch the movie. It's, um, the plot, it's, it's something. <laughs> I'm just gonna put it out there. I love weird movies. You know, I, I really love weird movies, just like many of you out there. I think, like, uh, the the idea that there has been so many reboots and franchises out there has made my craving for originality turn into a craving for weirdness that has been basically delivered mostly by A24, so in any movie that is distributed by A24, I'm definitely going to watch. And I know Saltburn is not distributed by A24, but it's A24-like. So, if you're into that, now you know. Yeah, this this is definitely a very weird story. Um, just like many other have said, it's... You know, I think by the trailer, it looks like it's going to be something. Basically, an eat the rich kind of thing, but it actually turns out to be, a, a, like, it goes into another direction, which, in the bigger scope, I don't mind, but also, if I put into the context of who the director is, her background being more like an affluent um, woman, I think what it does for me, it's, it subtracts a little bit the potential depth the message of the film could be. I think the ending could have been better. A half to two thirds of the movie, it's pretty well developed. By the third act, it's not the best. It feels a little bit rushed. For all the actions that Oliver does, I think it went like boom, boom, boom. That was a very visual kind of way of explaining it. But I do think like, if you don't give enough time for those actions to develop, it that already that that's already gonna subtract to what you want to deliver. I also think like you know there's like sh some shocking scenes in this movie. Of course, the first set I was actually I was fascinated by them. You know I was fascinated just like everybody in the movie theater. I of course had my reactions. You know like ah, but it, I mean I love that. You know that's that's part of what it makes this movie. In my, in a way I. I think it made logic, you know, like it's, you have this twisted character, of course it's gonna, this twisted character is gonna do this kind of stuff, but I am gonna say that as weird as you want to get, you can definitely fall into becoming predictable when it feels like your movie is starting to be weird just for weird's sake. What I mean is, I appreciate weirdness, um, I appreciate twisted scenes when the plot requires it, when it's actually gonna help the plot being uh, developed. When it stops doing that, it just feels like super superfluous. You know, it's not necessary. It's it's actually, it just feels, it feels like too much. And and the, the way in which I found out, like, okay, this is definitely what's happened, it's, it's because, like, by the third shocking scene, you know, um, if you have seen the movie, you know, when Oliver is, you know, doing something to the soil <laughs> where uh, Felix's body rests, you know, before he even did it, uh, at that point, I was just thinking, okay, what's the most shocking thing this character can do? And then I thought about it, and it happened, and I'm like, okay, this movie is, at this point, it's just trying to be too A24-ish like, you know, and it, it doesn't need to, it doesn't need to, it can be its own thing, it was already doing it, it was perfect, I, I, if you ask me, if you eliminated that last part, 
I think I would have been happier. Again, uh, I would really like to see deeper into um, Emerald's decision making into this, right? Maybe I, there's something I'm missing and I'm not understanding about Oliver at the end of the day, which, hey, that's understandable. It's a really different character, you know, and it's one that definitely deserves being analyzed and, re and this movie just deserves being rewatched again and again and again and again. And probably I'm going to be doing that <laughs> just because I have so much hopes for this movie. Like a part of me really wants to almost give it a 10. But right now, it, as a general, it, like generally speaking, it's just being like a 7.5 for me. And I'm like, no, no, no. Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm the problem. But we'll see. The more I see it, if I have a change of heart, I'll let you know. Now, I love... The detail, again, I, I said this before, but again, I'm, I'm going to go back to it. This movie definitely has a lot of details. It has a lot of Easter eggs. It has a lot of imagery. Um, one of my favorite ones was in the party where, you know, at that point, the truth came out of Oliver's true intentions. We definitely see these two forces, these two opposing forces, right? Um, and the imagery behind it is we see Felix with the wings you know, representing innocence of a fallen angel, you know, a fallen angel that has discovered the evil that there's in the world, an evil that he was completely oblivious about, but he just found out through the devil, a poor devil that was Oliver, uh, and you know, and, there, and then we see Oliver with his little, I want to call them horns, but I know it's not horns, it's not the name, I'll put the word here, okay, I'm sorry. But just like that, that that that's an example of the kind of details that this movie is doing. It's, uh, it's one of the reasons I want to keep rewatching because I know just like this, there's a bunch throughout the movie, and I, it's one of those things that keeps me delighted every time I watch, watch a film again and again and again. Oh, also just a little note. <laughs> this is just my personal taste, but I was not exactly happy with. Uh, the music choice at the end for the final scene. I love, let me tell you, I love Murder in the Dance Floor. It's one of my favorite songs. I, I love to jam to it. I love the disco vibe to it, you know, like, uh, <laughs> I love that song. But I think I just, um, I didn't like the tone it was given to the end. I would have personally prefer a more serious tone. Um... But again, as I was talking to, you know, sharing my ideas with others, they, some of them actually love the music choice, you know, and for them it was like, well, they're, we're showing the, basically the inner thoughts, the inner feelings of Oliver, showing him not caring anymore, just celebrating his victory, you know, in the most shameless kind of way, and I understand that, but I still like, I still wish I had like a more serious tone at the end but that's me those are all my notes even though again i'm not exactly completely happy with the ending of the plot i still think it's something that you should experience and see when you have the age not with your parents <laughs> don't let your parents know you watched it <laughs> you know why i still give it like a 7.5 8 if i'm generous out of 10 but so it's a really good movie and you should definitely watch it if you haven't watched it. And if you have, you know, just tell me what you think. Tell write down in the comments below and tell me what you love, what you don't love. If you don't agree with me in something, tell me why. I love when somebody tries to change my mind, you know, especially in films. Because um, I definitely want to expand my mind. And I know we, there's no right or wrong answer, right? That's... The magic of movies again it's not just about what we perceive we we see and what the director wants to give to us but it's also how we think about it okay that was my very personal take on movies but that was very cheesy but it's okay because again we don't judge here I, okay I forgot if I did get to introduce myself or not my name is Marisol and you know I'll probably he be here again you know, as soon as I get to see another movie that really talks 
speaks to me. I'll let you guys know if there's any movie that you would like for me to watch. Also, let me know. I love a good movie recommendation. Now you know my movie taste. <laughs> I'm so happy to see you, and I hope to see you soon. Okay, bye.